Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shroud. It is time to finally talk about our review of NVIDIA's new GeForce GTX Titan X graphics card. It's this bad boy we have sitting here. We've already talked about a little bit uh, uh, on the GTX Titan X. It was announced uh, at GDC in San Francisco and now is being fully revealed at GTC, the GPU Technology Conference hosted by NVIDIA in San Jose. So we're finally able to talk about the full specifications as well as the performance of uh, what is obviously the new highest performance single GPU graphics card on the market. Let's first talk about specifications. This is using a brand new GPU, the GM200, based on Maxwell. It's obviously the full big brother, if you will, uh, of what is found in the 980 and the 970. You get 3,072 CUDA cores. You get 192 texture units. Uh, you look at, you're getting, what is it, uh, 96 ROP units, 3 megs of L2 cache. Basically, if you look at every specification of a GeForce GTX 980, and increase it by a factor of 50%, you will get the raw specifications of what you have here. With the exception of a couple of interesting things. One, this is not a 256-bit memory bus. Now this is a 384-bit memory bus. Uh, we're still running at seven gigahertz clock speeds, but this card has 12 gigabytes of memory on it. 12 gigabytes, that's three times as much that you find as, as you find on the GTX 980. Um, that's quite a jump forward, obviously, uh, but that's kind of what you expect when you get the Titan branding on it. Remember, the original Titan had an insane amount of memory. The Titan Black did as well compared to the other cards in NVIDIA's GeForce lineup. Uh, you also get a higher TDP with this card. While the 980 had a 165 watt TDP, this card has a TDP of 250 watts. Again, another 50 to 52% increase in that metric if you want to judge it that way as well. So your your clock speeds are actually a little bit lower though. The base clock speed on this part is a thousand megahertz, one gigahertz, whereas on the 980 it was about 1100, 1116 or something like that. So you are getting a 10 to 12 percent decrease in base clock speed. And then your typical rated boost clock NVIDIA has it at uh, 1075 megahertz. But in my testing and real world gaming, I saw clock speeds of my card kind of settle in the 1177 frequency range. So again, a, a sizable increase there over what they rate as the minimum or typical boost clock. Um, and if we look at the card in terms of its features alone, it is, uh, it's actually an aluminum frame here that NVIDIA has painted black. Again, you've probably seen pictures of this already uh, since it was announced and people were allowed to photograph it. It has the same display output that we're used to with the 980 and the 970. That includes uh, three full-size DisplayPort connections, one HDMI, one DVI. Uh, it has uh, two SLI connectors here, so this will support two-way, three-way, and four-way SLI. It only requires an eight pin and a six pin power connector. So the 980 required two six pins. This is an eight pin and a six pin. But you may notice there's no back plate on this graphics card. That's kind of one of the first things that people complained about when uh, this card was first showcased at GDC uh, a couple of weeks ago. Now, when asked about that, NVIDIA claims, and as they put in their reviewing guides, uh, that the reason they did this, if we compare this to the 980 that I have sitting behind this box, that does have a back plate, um, it was more for airflow. They wanted to make sure that the cooler, the same uh, blower style cooler that exists on both cards, uh, is able to get the maximum amount of airflow into the chassis, into the, the housing, through the heat sink, and out uh, the front of the case there. Because this is going to run significantly hotter. They could uh, add a little bit more style, a little bit more flair to it, as well as protect these components. Uh, but they did notice that they were going to restrict airflow. Um, that's why they had this, this removable plate on the back of the 980, if you were, will remember that. I think the styling and look of the Titan X is really substantial. I, I mean, it really, it's really positive. I just, I think it looks amazing. It kind of is a, is a, a nice upgrade over what you get on a 980 uh, or a Titan or a Titan Black for that matter. They also did some other changes on terms of the board design. Uh, they actually moved the power delivery. It's, you can't really tell from the back, but they actually moved the power delivery uh, electronics, you know, uh, caps and stuff like that from uh, more towards the power connections and closer to the GPU, not merely to supply the GPU with better power, but so that they would be easier and, and better cooled by the blower fan. So the fan actually has uh, more capability to cool the uh, power regulation hardware in addition to the GPU itself. But otherwise you're looking at a typical kind of standard high-end flagship NVIDIA 
single GPU graphics card. Um, it is a, the cooler on it is a copper vapor chamber, so it's not just a normal heat sink. They are kind of returning back into that vapor chamber world. Uh, I know a lot of you are going to ask, it does have 12 gigs of memory with the recent issues that NVIDIA had uh, with the GTX 970. Is there any complications there? I was sure that no, that is not the case. There is no division of memory into different memory pools. This is not an 11 plus one or anything like that. It is a true 384 bit memory bus. It is running 12 gigs of memory, all the same um, capability, all the same performance levels. So we can kind of get that out, out, out of the way uh, early. The GPU itself is massive. If you look at the back of the video card, you'll be able to see um, the retention here. It gives you an idea of the size, but it is an 8 billion transistor GPU, uh, still built on the same 28 nanometer technology that the uh, GM204 is built on, right? So Maxwell architecture still scaling well in these places. And because of that, performance is, relatively speaking, pretty impressive. Now, even though you're getting 50% higher uh, CUDA core counts and ROP counts and texture counts, uh, and you do have a slight decrease in clock speed, you're not going to get 50% more performance compared to a GTX 980. If you look at our results, uh, you're looking at anywhere between 25 and 45% faster than a GTX 980 uh, across a wide range of benchmarks. If you compare it to a Radeon R9 290X, Intel's current, or I'm sorry, AMD's current flagship single GPU graphics card, you're looking at closer to that 40 to 45% range uh, in our testing as well. Now there is another card obviously that AMD has out in the market. They have still their R9 295 X2, right? So this is their dual GPU flagship card that actually sells for significantly less than it used to. I think you're looking in the seven to $800 range at this point. Uh, and it has two Hawaii GPUs on it. The, the Titan X is slower than it. And our, in our testing, that is anywhere from 25 to 35% faster than the Titan X. The 295X2 is faster than the Titan X. So it is not the fastest graphics card in the market. They can't make that claim. And I think probably the Titan Z would be a little bit faster as well. AMD still has that. But when you go to a dual GPU graphics card, you have other complications, right? You have uh, uh, potential stutter issues. You have the lack of crossfire profiles for some uh, maybe uh, newer games because uh, until this release, essentially the last driver we had from AMD came out in December with the Catalyst Omega release. You also have just the general purpose uh, complication of running multiple GPUs in your system. Frame rates aren't going to be as smooth regardless of the vendor if you're running multiple GPUs compared to a single. So uh, single GPUs have always been my recommendation if performance levels are of uh, similar, uh, performance levels are similar, I guess, between those two products. The 295X2 is definitely faster, but there's going to be complications for that. If you want to see more details on, on when that crops up, make sure you read our full review over at PCPer.com. In terms of overclocking, I was able to get this card to run stable at like 1,392 megahertz. So another 200 plus megahertz over uh, what we saw with our stock settings. So you get some uh, drastic increases there. And uh, NVIDIA was very upfront about um, making sure that they pointed out they, they used, uh, what do they call them, polarized capacitors uh, for low board noise. So basically they were trying, saying they were using the topmost level components to make sure there is as little to no coil noise on any of their cards that happen to make it out into the market. Um, now we come into the, the last and probably most important point, the price of the GTX Titan X. Now uh, we're still kind of iffy on this. There's a little bit of wiggle room because we had to record this video before uh, the launch occurred, before Jensen did his keynote over at the GPU technology conference. But from our understanding, this is going to be a $999 video card, which puts it uh, just under double the price of a GTX 980. GTX 980 started about $550 or so. At $999, it is not a value proposition in any capacity. The Titan X is definitely not that. But to be honest, NVIDIA has never marketed the Titan as the best value for any single category, whether that be gaming or compute or whatever. It happens to be their flagship product that they put their biggest and best GPU in that they definitely target to those people that are willing to pay more for a higher quality, higher performance part than you can get in most other places. So that makes it more expensive than the R9 295X2 that actually has better um, average frame rate performance, uh, which, is, which is kind of interesting. The um, 
295X2 is going to have higher average frame rates. It's going to have the complications of multiple GPUs. There's going to be a difference uh, of user, obviously, that I think that is interested in something like the Titan X versus interested in the performance per dollar value metric that you use on an R9 295X2. But even compared to the GTX 980, which is 550 bucks, you're only getting, let's say, 30 to 40 percent better performance, maybe 25 to 35 percent better performance with the Titan X for nearly two times the cost. So again, not a value proposition at all there. This is for people who want the best single GPU graphics card. Maybe you want multiple of the best single GPU graphics card. You'll be able to do that with the Titan X. You compare that to the Radeon R9 290X, which is even less than the GTX 980, right? And you begin to think that it's you know, 50% or so, maybe 40% or so slower than the Titan X. That's a significant um, price to performance metric that you can that you can judge there as well, right? So the 290X is still a, a, a relatively good option if you're just judging it on that metric. But I think it's fair to say that NVIDIA is not positioning the Titan X to go up against consumers or go target those consumers that are making that specific decision. Um, my time with the Titan X, very impressed with it. It, uh, it runs fairly quiet. It's not as quiet as the 980. It's maybe more on the level of the GTX 780. Uh, its power consumption levels are actually still lower than the Radeon R9 290X. It's more than the 980, of course, uh, but it's much lower than the 295X2 and still lower than the Radeon R9 290X, which is kind of saying a lot about what NVIDIA is able, uh, has been able to do with the Maxwell architecture in terms of power efficiency, even though this is a 250 watt part. Um, there's other little bits you get there, right? It still it supports all the same Maxwell features, MFAA, VXGI, all the VR Direct stuff that's kind of built into that is included with Titan X. So if you are the type of person that's willing to spend a thousand or so dollars on a high-end graphics card, and you want to be able to brag to your friends about having that, and maybe you want it to come in a pretty cool looking uh, box like that, which I am told all the Titan Xs will, then you might want to consider NVIDIA's new flagship GTX Titan X. Make sure you go to PCPro.com. We have the full review there. We'll have uh, uh, pictures of the GPU. We'll have all the specifications laid out for you in a nice easy table so you can compare it that way. And of course, all of our benchmarks and power testing and clock testing and all of that uh, so you can take a look there. Make sure you go get that. You really need that to get the full understanding of a GPU that is this expensive and is also uh, this complicated. So I'm Ryan Trout for PC Perspective, guys. Thanks.